Hello students. So in this video, so let us uh, start the uh, chapter called uh, crystal structure. You know. So in the previous video, we have already discussed uh, what is the syllabus for your uh, fifth semester. So as I said, there are two papers, right? So we are discussing now the paper six. Okay, the paper six is also called PH five five not three. Okay, in that paper, so the second unit is actually. The uh, solid state physics. Okay, in the second unit, we come across the first chapter, crystal structure. Okay, in the solid state physics, we have to discuss the first chapter, crystal structure, and X-ray in fact. Okay. Now, what kind of uh, discussion we have in this chapter? So you know, so basically the materials. We have the materials in the form of either solids, liquids, or gases. Right. Now, in that classification, you take only solids. Okay. So to understand the physical properties of the solids and what on what basis the physical properties will change, okay. So that is the question, okay. So to understand that kind of uh, properties, so we need to take the help of X-rays. In fact, okay. So we have uh, till today we have the X-ray diffraction technique. So using that uh, XRD, X-ray diffraction technique is also called XRD. So one can understand whether the given solid is A, a crystalline solid or a non-crystalline solid. Okay, so in that aspect, so we are discussing particularly the crystalline type of solids in this chapter. Okay, so we are not bothering about non-crystalline solids because uh, there is a difference, complete difference is there. Physically, there is a difference here. So in this small chapter, we need to understand what type of solids are called crystalline solids and how to understand the arrangement of atoms in such solids. Clear? Now just look at the board here. So I will say the material is solid. Okay. So as I said, the solid can be classified as crystalline solids and non-crystalline solids, right? So non-crystalline solids are also called amorphous solids. You know. Okay. So now, what is the difference? Okay. So if I see the crystalline solids, the interior, if I look into inside the solids. So what do you see? Either we get the arrangement of atoms, only one type of atoms, or different type of atoms also. Okay? We can call them as molecules, arrangement of molecules also, right? Okay. Now you just look into the geometrical arrangement. Okay. Basically, we are not bothered about any chemical properties here. It may be any type of atoms chemically. Okay. In the periodic table, you come across various type of elements. Based on that, we have different type of atoms also. And sometimes the atoms are in the Uh, neutral state or in the ionic state also. So we are not bothering about those things. Okay. First, you consider only the geometrical. Okay, the geometrical arrangement. So then we see the difference between these crystalline and non-crystalline solids. In case of crystalline solids, okay. So we see that the atoms or molecules are periodically arranged. Okay, there is a systematic, very systematic arrangement of atoms. You can see the solids. That's why I am written here. So periodic and very systematic arrangement of atoms or molecules in any solids will give you the crystalline solids. Clear? Then if there is no such periodicity, okay, it should be some three-dimensional one. So if there is some periodic systematic arrangement of array of atoms, then it is considered as crystalline solids. So suppose if there is no such periodicity in the arrangement of atoms, that means the atoms are completely randomly arranged. Okay, there is no periodicity at all. Then such solids are said to be non-crystalline solids. So no periodicity or the atoms are irregularly arranged, randomly arranged. Okay, then such solids are called amorphous or non-crystalline solids. So for example, you know the examples for this non-crystalline solids I can give like glass is a amorphous material. Is it okay? So you can consider the atom arranged in a board. Okay, or uh, let's consider some rubber, or any uh, polythene materials also. Okay, plastic materials etc. So these are all type of solids belongs to non-crystalline solids. Okay, then so if I consider the periodic arrangement of atoms, okay, in that again we have two types. So either we can classify, we can consider the crystalline solids as atomic crystals or ionic crystals. Okay. As I said, the atoms are available in the solids as neutral ones or sometimes ionic atoms. 
Okay, based on that, you can have this classification. That's it. But arrangement is again studied based on the geometrical pattern. Okay, so you have to follow the geometry to understand the arrangement of pattern seen in case of crystals and solids. Now, atomic crystals, I said. So, what do you mean by that? The crystal consisting of only one kind of atoms. Okay, there are no ions. Only it is consisting of arrangement of neutral atoms in a systematic three dimensional manner. Okay, for example, you can consider the crystal, copper as a crystal, you know, silver, gold, diamond, etc. You know, all you can, in fact, actually, all metals, all metals are crystalline solids. Okay, so you have to consider the metal in the pure form. Okay, so for example, gold, if you consider. So it should be 100% pure. So the entire solid consisting of only gold atoms, right? So in fact, such purity is not so easy to get. Okay, some kind of impurities will be present. So that can be considered as impurity artifacts. Okay. So 24 karat gold. So that may be 99.9% .9 pure. 22 karat. It is 91.6. Okay, what do you mean by 91.6 percent is gold? Remaining is something else. What is that? Normally it is copper. Okay. So that is it. So now I am considering the systematic arrangement of only one kind of atoms. Right. So if you consider the gold consisting of only gold atoms in the periodic element. Diamond. What is diamond? Crystal structure. Diamond consisting of only carbon atoms. Right. So consisting of carbon atoms in a systematic manner. Okay. So like that we can have the example for atomic crystals. So how to distinguish with the ionic crystals then? Ionic crystals. So we can consider zinc sulfide. See, zinc and sulfide, they are not in atomic form, they are in the ionic form. Okay. Zinc ions making the ionic bond with the sulfide. Okay. So zinc sulfide is an ionic crystal. Sodium chloride is an ionic crystal. Sodium positive ions, chloride negative ions, right? So there is an ionic bond between sodium and chloride and they are arranged uh, alternately in the structure, okay, in the solids. So that kind of structure is called ionic crystal structure. Potassium chloride, okay, similar in, in, in the structural form it is similar to NaCl, both are similar but the ions are different. In place of sodium we have potassium, that's it. Similarly silicon dioxide, okay, so like that. So normally you take any chemical compound. Okay, in the solid form, chemical uh, compound in the solid form will be in the uh, considered as ionic crystal. Okay, if you take the element as a pure form, as I said, gold, silver, copper, okay, etc., so they are considered as atomic crystal. Okay, now that is the uh, difference here. Now, how to understand this kind of crystals, the systematic arrangement of atoms? Is it same for all the crystals? No. So, you know. Geometry using the geometry, so we can have the different structures. You heard about the geometrical structures like cube, isn't it? Tetragonal structure, orthorhombic structure, etc. Various crystalline uh, solid shapes are there, right? So, based on that, we can understand the arrangement of atoms in it. But one thing we need to consider always the parallel pipette geometrical shape only. Okay, we need to, we need not to, we need not to consider uh, spherical shape or uh, cylindrical shape etc. Here yeah? we just consider only parallel prepared like cube, okay, tetragonal etc. So now I uh, will come to that later. Okay, so before that, so how to understand the crystal structure? Okay, so in order to understand the arrangement of atoms, okay, or molecules, whatever it is, how it is systematically arranged inside the solids and all. Okay, it is not possible to go inside and see the arrangement of atoms directly, isn't it? and very difficult to uh, take each and every crystal available in the universe and break it and uh, try to understand the crystal structure, okay? First, we need to have some knowledge, okay? What are the different possibilities to get the geometrical systematic arrangements, okay? So, for that uh, need of understanding, we need not consider the actual crystals at all, okay? In place of crystals, what we can do, we can just imagine some lattice points. The imaginary geometrical points called, uh, points are called here lattice points. Okay, so in that way, the very helpful tool to understand the crystal structure is the space lattice. Okay, so what is space lattice then? So space lattice, in fact, it is equivalent to a crystal structure, equivalent to a three-dimensional crystal structure. But in case of crystal structure, we have real atoms. In case of space lattice, we have only 
imaginary lattice points. That is only the difference. Okay. Now, generally, how to consider the space lattice? See, look at the definition. An infinite array of points. I said imaginary point, right? So, in place of atoms, in place of atoms, you should have the imaginary points here. So, arranged in a regular periodic fashion. Arranged in a regular periodic fashion in the three-dimensional manner. Okay. One should consider three-dimensional arrangement of atoms in the space. That means it is imaginary. Okay. The space can be imagined, and even lattice points also can be imagined in a three-dimensional systematic arrangement. Okay. So in space, such that each point in the lattice has identical surroundings. Okay. Then only it is possible to get the systematic arrangement of atoms. Okay. Or lattice points. So to understand this definition of space lattice, look at the diagram. Okay, simple diagram is there here. So what we have some lattice points or some geometrical points. You can say the geometrical points in fact are lattice points only. How it is arranged? First, we consider the lattice points in one dimension with equal distances, and similarly, it is continued in the other direction also. So that on this plane, okay, on this plane we have certain. Periodic repetition of lattice points. So we can call this as space lattice. So with what condition? Each lattice point should have equal identical surroundings, right? So now we can say so one of the lattice point. Let's say X. Okay. So this lattice point is having identical surroundings. How how do you justify that? See, we have four nearest lattice points in all directions. If you look at the all four directions here, in fact in two dimensions it is. Okay, two-dimensional plane. So we have four nearest lattice points at equal distances. Similarly, we take another lattice point Y. Okay, so that is also having equal distance four lattice points only, right? So what is the difference between X and Y? Okay, surrounding around the X, surrounding around the Y is same. Okay, that's why lattice points are equivalent to each other here. Okay, so each lattice point is having equivalent surrounding. Okay, no, no difference here. So we can say identical surrounding is possible around each lattice point in this diagram. Okay, that means this can be considered now a two-dimensional, okay, two-dimensional space lattice. But actual definition of space lattice is applicable for three dimensions. That means we have to imagine such repetition of lattice points in three dimensions in space. That's it. So in front of each lattice point, you can consider one more lattice point in space. Okay, so that we are moving the third direction. Okay, x, let's say y, and then z. So that we get set of imaginary lattice points in the space. Clear? In that case also, each lattice point should have identical surroundings. Then only it is possible to consider that imaginary group of space lattice. Okay, imaginary group of space lattice. In the space is called the uh, equivalent space lattice equivalent to what equivalent to crystal structure, right? Clear the difference between space lattice and crystal structure. Crystal is a real world consisting of what real atoms in it. How it is arranged? As per the definition, systematic arrangement of atoms in it. See here, systematic systematic arrangement of lattice points. That is only the difference. So now. To understand the actual crystal structure, so don't consider the crystal at all. So equivalent to that, we have space lattice, so that we can play with this type of imaginary lattice points to understand the geometrical arrangement of atoms in the crystal indirectly. Okay, so it is very easy to understand the crystal structure with the help of space lattice. Clear? So from the next video, I will continue how we can use the space lattice tool to understand the crystal structure. Clear? Okay. Thank you for watching this video and wait for the next video also.